do you kind of have like a standard practice that that you want to run before you know a weekend series or before a game or does, does that change depending on what's going on in the season or is there like hey like last practice before we play it's got to be it's got to look like this yeah a little bit um you know we're not blessed with a consistent practice schedule with all of our road trips and all the times that we need to kind of give the players a little bit of rest and some days off and and things like that so on a normal type of week, we definitely like to be able to try to practice three times. Say the first practice is a good, what we kind of call identity practice, like uh, intense with our battles, our compete, more of our kind of hard skills that we want to be able to see. And then that second practice, we like to focus more on the defensive side of things so that we can go a little bit more intense, not being too close to the game and a little bit of a longer duration uh, that we can work a lot more kind of on like a full ice tracking type of drill or or even more of a compete type of drill with a lot of box outs. And then the day before the game, we definitely like to get the players touching the puck a lot more to try to build up a confidence, uh, try to get a little less players on the defensive side. So that way they're able to make some plays and make some good reads. So uh, we definitely like to work a lot more on the uh, offensive type of principles on that day before, and even our special teams in that day before as well. So uh, just to get them moving a little bit, but to be able a lot shorter on the ice, but definitely get them a lot of touches. So that way they can try to build in that confidence for, for those weekend games. So it's funny just from, you know, doing the show, I I can tell if I'm talking to somebody pre or post practice. So if it's, if it's pre-practice, it's golf shirt. And if it's post-practice, it's hoodie. Um, So you're in a hoodie right now. So when you wrap up practice and and you huddle up with your assistant coaches, Benjamin, uh, and if I don't say this correctly, please correct me, Benjamin uh, Boheimer and Reggie Bois. Is that? Yeah. So Benjamin Bohemian and uh, Reggie Reggie Bois. Yeah. Okay. So um, when you guys get together post-practice, how do you how do you break it down and put a bow on it in terms of is there is there a conversation to wrap it up are you are you keeping track of anything how do you how do you put it a, a bow on the day yeah absolutely so just to kind of even hit rewind a little bit we'll we'll practice at 1 30 every day and we'll we'll all get in here around 9 30 and we'll we'll kick the day off just kind of chit chat a little mm-hmm. bit and maybe evaluating some games from the weekend or finishing touches on a little bit of video or or what we might want to want to do with the players that day. Then when our uh, development coach uh, is able to come around 11, then we design practice, what we want to achieve for that day. Normally, I'll have some notes about what I want to see uh, achieved that day, and then the boys will give their input as well, and, and we'll put the practice together in the video and who needs to have individual meetings with me or who needs uh, individual meeting with the respective assistant coaches. And uh, and then we kind of just get the the plan designed. We post the plan, uh, practice plan, the day plan in the room for the guys with the drills. And then once everybody is here, we'll get them into the video room. Uh, We're lucky enough that we have our own kind of cinema style, theater style video room here. So we'll get them in. We'll go through practice. uh, We'll explain every single drill before practice, whether it's three drills like a morning skate or whether it's eight drills in the practice. We go through everything before we go on the ice. We'll give our key points, what we want to see achieved, why we're doing the drill. And then uh, if we have any video on top of that, like a game debrief from the weekend, or if we have even um, just some clips we want to show why we're doing a drill in practice, some NHL clips as to why we're implementing something in our system, in our structure. Uh, uh, Even if uh, maybe it might be a PK video day, PP video day, whatever it might be, a a D skills video day, whatever. But we'll have usually... uh, Usually every day we do some sort of video component as well. The players will go for their activation. Our goalies will get on the ice 20 minutes, 15, 20 minutes before the players do. And then uh, if they get on, say, 15 minutes, we'll do a five-minute drill that we don't need goalies, and then we'll get everybody in together. So at the end of practice, we kind of go through each drill to see if there is any kind of adjustments that need to be made. And we'll kind of talk about that so that way we can make any adjustments in the drill. We'll do that very quickly together just uh, to kind of chit chat while the players are getting undressed. And then when the players are dressed, usually they have a workout to do, whether it would be a quick kind of agility day or more of a power day or even a a stretch type of day like it is today before we hit the road tomorrow. And then all the uh, all the other coaches are full time video goalie coach as well as here every day. Uh, they'll go out, they'll talk amongst the players, they'll kind of chit chat with them a little bit. We we try as much as possible to have a no computer rule that as soon as the players show up here, 
uh, in the day that uh, nobody's on their computer. Now, I, love I, I, I say that, but for me, I'm finishing up a video. We're trying to get ahead of a few things and the boys are out kind of chit-chatting around with the players. But uh, especially after practice, nobody's on, on their computer unless they're doing individual meetings with players. Then usually it's kind of uh, try to stagger the meetings a little bit that if one coach is busy in an individual meeting, another coach jumps out with the players. So uh, just to kind of get a little a little feel for the guys, just to even sometimes talk outside of hockey is such a big thing, especially before practice uh, when they show up from school, just to kind of uh, clear the air a little bit before it gets into bu- uh, business time. But uh, once the players really finish up their workouts, then all the coaches will sit down together and we do player daily evaluations. So it's something uh, Ben, our uh, newest assistant coach this year, brought into us as an idea uh, that I believe he said he got from Benoit Gru in Syracuse, uh, just about doing player daily evaluation. So we'll we'll rank the players on a scale of one to five. We haven't had a five yet this year. That's for sure. Our our expectation standard is uh, is obviously very, very high. Uh, Even I think we might have only given out a couple handful of 4.5s, but most of the time we know a guy had a really good practice when there are four, 2.5 is an average, maybe didn't stand out, didn't kind of do the things. And obviously it goes down from there. We've had some ones, we've even gave a couple of guys some 0.5s. And usually when it gets into that area, then then we'll like to uh, have a conversation obviously with that player to see if there's anything personal going on with them. And we'll keep track of their evaluations throughout uh, throughout the week. And then even if it comes down to it that it's some um, uh, game time decisions, we go back through the evaluations and say, well, listen, this guy had a better week of practice in our eyes. And we'll, we'll go with the guy that, uh, that we feel had the better week of practice and did the details that we wanted to do. Maybe he did the extra work and we gave him a little extra 0.5 in his evaluation because of that. So it's just a, an extra little quantitative tool for us to be able to use to be able to uh, – just uh, just keep keep track of the players, keep track of their habits, and keep track of the work that they're putting in. Do, do the players know that you do that? Yep, absolutely. So what we'll do, if, if we meet with a player, we're not happy about their practice, we'll, uh, we'll copy and paste their results into a separate document so they don't see the evaluations of the other players. But we'll copy and paste, and then we'll show them the notes that we made. You know, we might say, hey, uh, you know, today, uh, yesterday we feel like uh, you – uh, you had an average practice, but the day before you were really good. And this is what we feel was missing according to our notes. This was your plus for practice. This was your minus for practice. And uh, this is what we want to see you improve on, or this is what we want to see you continue to do well to be able to be consistent in. So uh, especially for our young guys here, we're one of the younger teams in the league, and we have a, a certain expectation of the work we want the players to put in and the habits we want in practice. So it helps them with that adjustment period to get adjusted much quicker into that and to understand that for us here, uh, you know, we uh, hear a lot about guys saying, well, he's not a practice player. He's not a practice player, but we want guys, you know, you look at the, you know, Michael Jordan talking about his, uh, his practice habits and Kobe Bryant talking about his practice habits. And I mean, you look at the Sidney Crosby's, you know, all these incredible athletes all over the world that they practice really hard and they push themselves outside of their comfort zone. So that way in the game, it it becomes more natural and ultimately becomes easier. And that's what we want for our players that we want to put them in a stressful environment in practice that we don't want to give them all the answers. We want to make them figure it out. And that way, when it comes into the game, it's, it's more natural. They're able to control their emotion a little bit better in, in those kind of more stressful situations against obviously opponents who are at times going to be a little bit harder on them, but, uh, we definitely want to create that situation, that environment here that they're going to be able to learn and develop every single day, but they do it uh, in a way that's that's not just you know only a five on O drill. It's it's going to be getting that pressure, back pressure, having to figure out the decision to take in the moment. You know, coach is taking away the middle. Okay, got to go to the board. You know, different things like that, just to be able to throw a little wrench into it, just so that they're they're not just expecting one thing and then they're not able to have that plan B uh, coming back out after it. So it's interesting. Like I, I, I know that you're really big on the on the psychological part of the game and, and, and coaching, but you said something about like it affects. You know, obviously, you want players to experience stress in practice. You want them to make uh, decisions in practice, but that that you know part of that is that it helps them control their emotions in, in games. I mean, just I mean, you're two years in here. Have you have you have you noticed that or had feedback from players to say, hey, like in, in the moment when it's a tight game, like I just feel better equipped to go out there and play loose and, and, and play free and, and go off my, my instincts. 
Yeah, yeah. Well, definitely a little bit. Uh, and, and for us, we, we talk so much, obviously. I mean, I'm sure every team talks a lot about the momentum of things and the game management of things that we'll, we'll do the competitions, you know, we'll do the small area games competitions, you know, red versus black. We'll, we'll do those at the start of practice, at the end of practice. Uh, but ultimately, we want the players to just consistently compete. And, and we'll even do it at some times, you know, maybe throwing in a little wrench, just having teams that are playing from behind or playing with the lead. So, well, we'll try to be able to mix things nice. up a little bit just to be able to put them in different types of situations. So that's a that's a big thing for us is is then on top of it with the evaluations that we're able to evaluate to be able to say, OK, well, this guy didn't really you know, step up that well in the compete drill in that uh, the time that his team needed him or something like that. And it can be a good building block for us because we want the players to make the mistakes in practice. And I mean, we want them to make mistakes in games as well. It's just you, you see the great players are the ones who are able to learn from them the quickest and the ones who are able to react in the best way possible. And that's our biggest thing with making mistakes here that we, we never try to use the term negative uh, by no means. It's either positive or learning. So every situation is a learning, but anything that a guy would consider a negative, take a negative emotion, anything like that, we want to switch it around into a learning, into an adaptive type of mindset. So trying to really push that growth mindset to keep them open-minded, that when they make a mistake, it's a learning opportunity at the end of the day. And even when they do something positive, it's something learning that they did something well and that they want to be able to repeat to be consistent in that. So uh, it's definitely something very important for us that we want them to learn in every single situation, both on and off the ice. And when we create those stressful environments in the game, you know, we're very hard on details in practice, that we're very hard on work ethic in practice, that, you know, ultimately at times uh, for me that I, I might lose a voice in practice, just uh, just really trying to make sure that they're they're pushing hard and they're, they're not, uh, you know, playing back on their heels in practice, that they're always on their toes. So, you know, I want them to be able to feel that type of pressure, feel that type of, of stress, and then be able to debrief it with them after. If there's a guy that has an off day, then be able to talk with it through him. It's just say, hey, you know, is there anything outside of hockey that might have been affecting you today? No, okay, then what was going on on the ice? Why, why did you think of your practice? Here's what our evaluation was of your practice. Okay, now let's talk about that together. How can we be better for it, and how can we get you better prepared for the game? So... Uh, it's just always continuously trying to link things and giving them the purpose as to why we're doing things and then getting them to understand the overall importance of it and then just developing and trying to get consistent in our learning and consistent in our habits every day. One of the most important things to anyone, especially competitive athletes, is feedback. No one wants to hear a great game all the time. They want to know why they played well or why they didn't. And Power Player is a very good platform for this because it encapsulates many of the areas of the performance spectrum. Now, a player might have gone pointless in a game, but a coach can watch that player's shifts and then say to that player, hey, we scored four goals, you were on the ice for three, and you made a really good play that helped us get into a scoring situation, and that is really important for our team. A player who played hard and smart in a game might not show up on the scoreboard, but the analytics folks might think he was the best player in that game, and we need to make sure that we can assess those areas of a player's game and provide that feedback to him or her. Practice is also an area where coaches can generate a lot of dialogue with players. How you practice is how you play, and many good youth hockey coaches have found a way to film practice, review it, and give feedback regarding work ethic, execution, and compete level. Power Player has metrics for all of this, as well as a great area for using video, which to me is the best teaching tool we have, and which I utilized a ton on this platform. Power Player allows coaches to reach a greater number of players on a larger number of topics in a way that today's young athlete needs and understands.